Hey, you guys, it's Farina Jadav with the Live Longer Podcast and Health Boot Camps here with Dr. Brian Moe answering one of the questions that you guys sent in, which is, should I exercise, Dr. Moe? I worry. I was told I have to really watch my diabetes. I have type 2 diabetes. You know, I'm concerned if I do work out, how much should I work out? How long should I work out? Et cetera, et cetera. So, Dr. Moe, what is the connection between working out and diabetes and how concerned should someone be and how should they make sure that they're exercising safely? Great question. And I think we have to look at this from two different perspectives. One is that sedentary lifestyle, not being active, not moving is a major contributor to obesity and diabetes today. So if you're not moving and not active, uh, that's a major strike against you in the diabetes game and in the heart disease game and in the obesity game. So it's important to move. Our bodies are meant to move. You know, we were either uh, hunting or we were uh, fighting for our lives or we were picking and gathering food at some point in our history. So our bodies are meant to move. They're not meant to fight uh, you know, desk games or office games where we're sitting in a chair all day long. And it's amazing if you think about it, not everyone, but many people spend their lives, most of it in a sedentary position. They sleep all night. They might get up and sit down for breakfast. And then they sit in the car on the way to work. They might sit at work all day long. And then they get off back in the car. Maybe they get an hour of exercise in there somewhere if they're lucky. They're on the couch in front of the TV, and then they're back in bed. So it's amazing what percentage of life we spend in a sedentary position, whereas I think life in the past, we were naturally much more active. Now, you may have a job where you uh, are on your feet and you work all day, and that's great, but uh, research shows that that still isn't enough. We really need intentional exercise to prevent diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. So uh, so how do we do that? Well, there's different forms of exercise that have been shown to be beneficial for cardiovascular health and for weight and diabetes. There's really five types of exercise that I look at. Uh, the first is uh, sort of restorative work or, um, you know, gentle exercise. Uh, that's things like uh, stretching and uh, maybe a very gentle form of yoga or Tai Chi or something like that could be a restorative type of exercise. Uh, there's, of course, uh, play, you know, where we're just out running around with our kids or chasing our dog around or, um, you know, perhaps that could maybe, maybe it doesn't look like play, but that could be uh, parking on the opposite side of the parking lot and walking across the parking lot to get to work or taking the stairs to your office. Those are all sort of uh, activity uh, type exercise. And then we get into uh, the, the real intentional exercise, which would be uh, aerobic, uh, slow fat burning cardio exercise. That's walking and swimming and uh, maybe light uh, cycling or bike riding, where your heart rate stays in that fat burning zone. So maybe 55 to 75% of your maximum heart rate. Mm -hmm. uh, you're using oxygen so you can carry on a conversation easily. Uh, typically, during that uh, type of exercise, you can talk, um, and uh, but perhaps not sing. So, you know, we use this talk sing uh, test. So you can talk, but maybe not sing. Uh, so you're, you're working, but you're not working so hard that you're uh, not able to use oxygen and breathe uh, normally. Uh, and then there's resistance training, uh, which is using weights or body weight exercise. And then finally, sprint training, which is the other end of the spectrum. This is where we're not using oxygen. We're uh, in anaerobic uh, fitness. We're burning uh, mostly sugar, and uh, we have limited resources to burn there, but we're burning mostly sugar, so it's usually short duration, very high intensity, and we're not able to talk or sing when we're doing that type of exercise. Usually, you're just breathing very heavy, um, and I think we need to do all of those. Um, I think it's important to do all five of those types of exercise. We need to play. We need to take the stairs, and by the way, that play... Um, 
maybe would also um, constitute if you have an active job, you know, maybe that's part of that as well. Um, it's activity-based exercise. Uh, I think we need to do restorative work, especially if you have some stress. Uh, do some uh, Shivananda yoga or do some Tai Chi, do some relaxing stretching or gentle Pilates type work. And then there's also, uh, again, the more aggressive forms of exercise, giving yourself time to get your heart rate up on a, on a brisk walk or a swim and, and actually get some cardiovascular benefit from your exercise. Do some body weight or resistance training and uh, do a little bit of sprint training. Sometimes you have to work up to the sprint training, make sure your heart healthy enough to do it. But uh, that's one of the best techniques to uh, burn sugar and to uh, deplete stored sugar in your body, what's called glycogen, to uh, create a, basically a vacuum for the sugar you eat and the sugar in your blood uh, to, to fill those stores back up. So I think that sprint training is another essential piece. Are there any dangers to someone who has diabetes working out or any of these specific ones that you mentioned dangerous at all? Well, if you uh, have what's called brittle diabetes, where you have a hard time regulating, controlling your blood sugar, or and or if you are on insulin or one of the potent blood sugar lowering drugs, uh, there's a class of drugs called sulfonylureas, which... Uh, really drop blood sugar pretty drastically. Mm -hmm. If you're in any of those three situations, we've got to be a bit careful and you may want to slowly work into an exercise program. But for people who either aren't on medication or, or who are taking uh, something like metformin, which is sort of the basic diabetes medication, uh, there's really no risk to adding in exercise. Again, you want to make sure that it's that you are heart healthy enough to do the form of exercise you're doing, uh, whether that means having a stress test with your doctor or at least just getting there okay uh, if you're not exercising at all now and you want to start. But if you're already doing exercise and, and uh, you, know, you just want to increase your fitness level, then just start slowly and gradually start to add some of these forms of exercise uh, to your tolerance level uh, to the point where you're able to uh, incorporate all five of these forms of exercise. What about standing versus workout? So, you know, we're saying now st uh, sitting is the new smoking, right? That's, that's the cool new marketing um, ad words being used. So is there a difference between just standing and sitting? Is, does that even count or not really? You really have to be moving for it to count. Not for fitness, but I will say that standing and moving around, mm -hmm. uh, I think, can be beneficial for musculoskeletal health. So uh, sitting, particularly in a chair uh, or in one position all day, is not at all good for your spine and your bones and your musculoskeletal health. When you're standing, you're loading your skeleton. So uh, it's better for uh, your muscles. It's better for uh, your bone health. And it's better for your joints. And it's even better if you change positions frequently, you know, go for a walk around the office periodically or around the house. Uh, you can sit sometimes, stand sometimes, sit on a ball, like if you have one of those big exercise balls. Right. Uh, rather than a, yeah, they are fun. Absolutely. Sit Indian style or sit, uh, you know, on the floor, try to sit unsupported for a little while if you can. Um, you know, even if it's only for 30 seconds, but these are all uh, different ways of sort of stimulating the muscles, joints, and bones of the body in different ways. But I think for cardiovascular fitness and for blood sugar control, we really need to get moving. Absolutely. And so when you join the health boot camps, you'll see there's a lot of great workouts. In fact, there's a daily workout that's sent to you that's been curated. And along with the workout, you also have some kind of a yoga, something that's uh, more rejuvenating, replenishing, nurturing, that's you know not necessarily cardio. So we give you both kinds of options. You've got the cardio as well as something like yoga, tai chi. And we give you these little tips, which is, you know, if today is not going to be the day when you get to do a cardio workout, you know what, just stand up and work. As you can see, I'm actually standing. This interview is being conducted uh, with me standing because I realized at one point that I was sitting, you know, four or five hours a day just doing these interviews. And I thought, you know what, why not just stand up and do these interviews? So there's these little tiny changes you can make that do impact how your body feels on a day-to-day -day basis. So check out the B-Diet 
Diabetes Health Bootcamp with Dr. Mole. And make sure to tune in and check out the other interviews that Dr. Mole has answered these questions. Amazing insights. Don't miss them. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, Dr. Mole. Thank you. Take care.